Welcome to target seven, where we'll be learning about function notation. So you're used to writing an equation that has both an x and a y, like this. But function notation is going to look a little different. Instead of writing y, we write f parentheses x, which is pronounced f of x. So we would pronounce this f of x equals 2x, where f is the name of the function. Then inside the parentheses, x is the input for this function. And on the other side of the equal sign, you have the rule that tells you how to get back your outputs. Be careful here. A lot of people misunderstand function notation. f of x does not mean f times x. So don't ever do anything silly like trying to divide by f. f of x is all one thing. That basically means y. Rewriting something in function notation is a pretty simple task. All you have to do is replace the y equals with an f of x equals. So we're going to rewrite this as f of x equals 2x plus 4. And now it's in function notation. That's it. All right, now let's do a process that's called evaluating. We're given a function f of x equals 3x plus 1. What this means is if you put something in, you need to multiply it by 3 and then add 1 to it. It tells us to find f of negative 2. What that means is negative 2 should be the input now. In this rule, the input is x. So we take x and multiply it by 3 and then add 1. When we're being told to put in negative 2, that means wherever we see an x, we should put a negative 2. So f of negative 2 equals 3 times negative 2 plus 1. That's me putting negative 2 in for x wherever I saw it. Now, we are not going to mess with this side. f of negative 2 is a statement. It's not f times negative 2. We're not going to try to divide and solve for f. We're just going to leave it as f of negative 2, and we're going to simplify the right side. When I multiply 3 times negative 2, I get negative 6, and I'll add 1, and now I get negative 5. So my final answer here is f of negative 2 equals negative 5, where negative 2 was the input, and f of negative 2, the output, is negative 5. Our actual answer to this question is just negative 5, but it's important to start understanding this input-output relationship that comes with function notation. This is one of the beautiful things about function notation. When you're given something like this, as opposed to something like this, you have a little bit more information. With y equals negative 4, I don't really know anything about x. But with f of 3 equals negative 4, I know that 3 was the input and negative 4 was the output. We can use this information to rewrite this function notation as an ordered pair. Since 3 was the input and negative 4 was the output, we can write this as an ordered pair with the x being 3 and the y being negative 4. One of the valuable things about function notation is that we can deal with several equations at a time, and if we're smart about how we name the functions, it's pretty easy to tell them apart. So in this problem, we are given four different equations and four verbal descriptions for four different functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to match each equation to the proper verbal description and write it in function notation. Paige has $15 and is saving five. The start is 15, the change is five. So we've been writing y equals start plus change x. So the change is always attached to the x. So this five should go with the x and this 15 should go as the starting value. y equals 15 plus 5x. Now, they write all of these equations up here with the x term first. So instead of writing 15 plus 5x, I'm going to look for 5x plus 15, which is this equation. However, instead of writing it like this, I'm going to give it the name p of x because it's Paige's function. The second one for Sydney, she has 30 and is saving 10. So we should have 10x and 30. 
which I see in this equation. Because it's Sydney, I'm going to write s of x equals 10x plus 30. Next, we have Abby, who has $10 and is saving 30. So 30x and 10 to start with. That's this equation. And since it's Abby, we'll write a of x equals 30x plus 10. Finally, we have Emma. Emma has 5 and is saving 15 per week, so 15x. So we're looking for 15x plus 5, and we'll write it as e of x for Emma. This next problem asks us to determine the amount of money Abby has after 12 weeks of savings. Well, 12 weeks, weeks is our x variable. It says it in the problem up here, and we can also tell because of the wording. $5 each week, $10 each week, $30 each week. Whatever's attached to the changing value, that is our x. So we're being told that x equals 12. And we're doing this for Abby, which would be this function. So what we're looking for is a of 12. Well, if a of x equals 30x plus 10, we're going to replace the x's with 12. So a of 12 equals 30 times 12 plus 10, which equals 360 plus 10, which equals 370. So a of 12 equals 370, meaning she has $370 after the 12 weeks. Next, they ask us to determine when Emma will have $50 in her account. Emma's equation is e of x equals 15x plus 5. We want the final amount to be 50. That's the e of x. Not just the x, but the e of x. In other words, the y. So they're really asking us to solve this equation. 50 equals 15x plus 5. So I'll subtract 5 from both sides and then divide by 15 to get x equals 3, which means she'll have $50 after three weeks. Next, they ask us to determine the value of s of 4 and explain the meaning in the context of the problem. Well, s of 4 means that we're going to plug 4 as the input into the s function. So we have s of x equals 10x plus 30, and we're going to replace the x's with 4. And now we're just going to simplify the right side. 40 plus 30, which equals 70. So s of 4 equals 70, which means that our input is 4 and our output is 70. Putting this back into the context of the original problem, this says if she saves for four weeks, she'll have $70. Notice that I specifically talked about Sydney, as this is Sydney's function. If you just said she saves, it could have been one of the other girls. Now, one more example. They're going to tell us e of 18 equals 275. This time, we don't have to determine the value like last problem. They're already giving it to us. They just want us to interpret it. Remember, 18 is the input and 275 is the output. This is Emma's function. So if Emma saves for 18 weeks, she'll have $275. And that's all you have to do. You just have to interpret what the function notation means in context. The next thing I want to look at is a problem where we kind of go backwards. So here's a situation where a carnival costs $5.50 per, for admission and $0.75 cents per ride. So we start at $5.50 and change by 0.75. They give us the equation. Now for part B, they tell us that C of R equals 16.75 and ask us what R is. R is what's in parentheses. That means R is the input. What's outside of parentheses out is the output. So they're telling us that 16.75 is the output, and they want to know what's the input. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this function, c of r equals 5.5 plus 0.75 r, and we're going to replace c of r with the output that we want, which would be 16.75. And now we can just solve for r. Subtract 5.5, divide by 0.75, and get 15, meaning that it will cost $16.75 for 15 rides. We were given the output of 16.75, which is dollars, and we solve for the number of rides that go with that, which is 15. So it'll cost $16.75 for 15 rides. And lastly, I want to show how function notation can be used with graphs. Negative 1 is inside parentheses, so that means that's the input, and we want to know what output goes with that. 
Well, if we look at the graph at the x of negative 1, we see a point with a y of 10. So 10 would be the output. We're doing the same kind of thing here in part f down here. 2 is the input, so we look for that on the x-axis, and that point has a y value of 1, so 1 is the output. Now part e looks a little different. Notice x is the input, so we don't know what it is, and outside of parentheses we see 4. Outside of parentheses would be the output. So we want a y of 4, and we want to see what point has that. That would be this point, who has an input of 1. So if the output is 4, then x, the input, is 1. All right, there was a lot in this lesson, but one point I really want to hammer home. When you see function notation like f of 5 equals 7, remember what's inside the parentheses is the input. What's outside the parentheses is the output. If you came away with anything else from this lesson, write it down now. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.